Welcome to Ask GCN Anything About Cycling. As the name suggests, this is the video where we answer your cycling questions every week. Comment below with the questions that you'd like us to answer and we'll pick a few of our favourites for next week's video. All of the videos that I'm going to mention are linked in the description and they'll be linked up there too. First up, we've got this one from Ollie Bell who's wondering what the toughest Grand Tour is. Well, having never ridden a Grand Tour, I thought I should ask Dan who's ridden both the Tour and the Giro and he said that the Giro is definitely the toughest for riders to make it through day to day but the Tour is definitely the toughest to win. And that makes sense when you see the brutal stages on show at the Giro with the gravel roads, the really bad weather still in the Alps, loads of snow sometimes, and you compare it to the Tour where guys like Chris Froome, Alberto Contador are prioritising that as their goal for the year. On the brutal stages in the Giro, some of the best days of racing I think I've ever seen have been at that race, and Simon has put together a list of the toughest stages ever at the race. The 428 kilometer stage from Bari to L'Aquila had the riders starting at midnight. An eventual winner, Luigi Lucotti, took over 19 hours to complete the stage. But worse than that, it had been an absolute war with the elements, with rain and snow battering the riders over no less than eight major climbs. And perhaps unsurprisingly, out of the 81 riders that started that Tour of Italy, only eight managed to complete it. Next up we've had this one from Marwan Mohammed. It's a really good question. Marwan says, I'm new to riding a bike and I'm riding it to work every day. Do you have any tips on how to make my ride more comfortable? That's not the easiest one to answer quickly Marwan, but it's a really big subject. There are some really good things that you can do to make your bike more comfortable, as Simon is going to explain in this video. For those of you sitting there thinking about aerodynamics, I would say that yes, on paper a lower front end is more aerodynamic, but what's actually the key is your body position. So seeing as you can bend your arms, you can still get really aero, even with a higher, shorter stem, simply by doing just that. Meaning that you can be comfortable for most of your ride, but still get aero when you need to. Time for the quick fire round, and another reminder to comment below with your questions for next week's show. First up, we've got a good one from Nathan Hayes, who's asking, do we have any tips for an asthmatic cyclist? Definitely, get to your doctor, get your prescription sorted, Exercise-induced asthma on the bike is no fun at all. You need to know how to manage it and manage it properly. Next up, Novan Adrian. I've been riding my road bike for two years, average distance 200 kilometers a week or more. Very good work. The last two months, I rode on the same boring route every day and I felt kind of stuck. Can't improve, can't even touch my old personal best. How do I improve my performance? Well, you've nailed it with the boring route, I'd say, Novan. I'm not surprised that you haven't seen any improvements. I'd recommend a change or a rest. Find a route that interests you, maybe some different roads, maybe even a gravel track or take a week off and then return to your route. Just you know, change things up, you'll see a benefit, you'll see a change. Rodolfo Gio, how much did you guys train when you were younger, i.e. 14? Do you train every day, once a week? How dedicated were you? Well, Rodolfo, not too much actually. I think when I was 14, my parents, who cycled too, were just really keen that I enjoyed riding my bike, so I used to get on my mountain bike called the cross bike in the woods. So what I'd recommend is a focus on building your skills rather than a real focus on regimented training, I think. Looking back now, it was the kids who really enjoyed riding their bikes that I know are still involved in cycling. Richard Knights asks, how do you get that horrible plastic taste out of new drinks bottles? Well, Richard, it sounds pretty flippant, but just clean them thoroughly before you use them and make sure you rinse them too, because I think a taste of washing up liquid is up there with the new plastic taste when it comes to just not being very nice. Car Club Channel asks, can you use a training mask to train on a ride, one that restricts the amount of oxygen? I, I wouldn't do that, I've never heard of it, and there are plenty of ways to make training harder. Try an interval session, I'll link the training playlist below. Henban Gaming. How do they transfer the team buses from Europe to America? It's a very good question because many teams seem to have equally good setups over at the US stage races as they have over in Europe. But as far as I'm aware, none of them are transferring buses. In fact, I just think none of them will ever transfer buses. Some of the better funded teams, or teams with American backers, do have team buses in the US, but some of them, I think Team Sky, for example, go as far as renting an RV or a bus over in America, wrapping it up in full team livery and using it for the races that they do there. Our last question is from Janko Milivojevic, who is asking, can he still beat his mate who is riding a way more expensive bike than him now? I'd say, yes, you definitely can if you're fitter than him. You could also beat him by sitting on and sprinting for the cafe. That might, you might not go down too well with him. And for me, you know, the really important thing is that you enjoy riding your bike. So as long as you're still enjoying it, don't worry too much about comparing yourself to someone who's on a way better bike than you. One thing I would say is that a heavier bike, which I'm presuming your bike is, might be a slight disadvantage on a hill, which is where the fitness is gonna come in. And 
Matt and Sai actually did a really interesting test where they weighed down a bike to just find out the real difference between a heavy and a light bike. So what we're going to do, Matt and I are going to do two runs of this climb each. Now it's about eight kilometers long, an average gradient of about 7%. I am going to use my Garmin Vector power meter to ride at a consistent power both runs. I'm then going to do the second run with two kilograms of ballast added to my bike and then we can compare the times directly. Yanko, you can still beat your mate but maybe a better coffee, not a load of money. Right, there we go. If you like this week's Ask GCN Anything About Cycling, give the video a thumbs up and leave your questions for next week's down in the comments. To see our top 10 common cycling mistakes video, click right there. To see all of our videos from the Giro d'Italia 2016, click there. To subscribe, click on the globe and to visit our shop, just click here.